there are so many items to craft in DayZ that it can get a little overwhelming, especially with new items occasionally being added throughout its continuous updates. But there are some items which are way more useful than others and here we're going to discuss them, as well as a few others, from fires and weapons to traps and shelters. And as always, if you find anything useful along the way, please leave a like on the video, I am such a small channel and it genuinely helps me out so much. But without further ado, let's get into the video. God, I love this game. God, I hate this game. Firstly, the basics. Two stones can be combined to make a stone knife. This is one of the most important tools a beginner can have and you absolutely require a knife or a bladed tool as soon as possible. You can find stones on train tracks, their paths, or you can mine boulders with a pickaxe to produce large rocks. You can then mine these large rocks to get smaller ones. Using a knife on clothes will produce rags, but keep in mind that doing it on the raincoat will produce coloured armbands. The coloured armbands will be determined by the colour of the raincoat and you will get several armbands each time, which is really useful for identifying teammates out in the field. But let's focus on the regular clothes and the rags. Once you cut up the clothes, you usually get several rags. You can either use these as bandages, adding disinfectant to them to prevent infections, or if you get a stack of six, you can combine them with another stack of six to make a rag. Rope. Another way to make a rope is to cut up guts with a knife. Guts can be found in basically every animal larger than a chicken. We'll talk more about the many uses of rope throughout this video. But first let's talk about fires. A fireplace has three stages. The first stage is a simple campfire. Using sticks with a multitude of other items allows you to craft a fireplace. You can use sticks with rags, paper, bark, firewood or bandages, each one allowing you to craft a fireplace. To find sticks, either approach a bush and cut it down using your hands or preferably a knife or hatchet, or take a stick and split it in two with a knife. You can create a fireplace and set it down anywhere you want to light it, however, this has to be outside and making a fireplace like this inside will never be able to be ignited. But to ignite it, assuming you don't have matches or a lighter, approach a tree with a knife and you'll be prompted to scrape off bark. Combine this bark with a stick and you'll make a hand drill. Then just approach a fire and ignite it. But next, there's the second stage, where you can improve the aesthetics by adding 8 stones. This adds no benefit to the fire, just basically lets you keep the fire there for a little bit longer, but it does look really cool. But the best upgrade is arguably this one, which turns your regular campfire into an oven. Here you can cook with pots and frying pans while also blocking some of the light the fire produces. To do this, add 16 stones to the fire and then click on the action button to build it. If you don't have the time or resources to do any of this, and chances are you probably won't, you'll need a way to cook meat on the go. And here's how you do it. You can simply combine a knife and a long stick to create a sharpened stick. Though note, anything capable of cutting like a hatchet will also do. Not only can this be used as a low tier weapon of sorts, but you can combine it with any meat such as chicken, goat, fish and so on, and then use it to cook them over the fire. Just make sure that your fire has this ashy base before you try to cook. This takes a couple of seconds seconds to appear but once it does you can then just click on it with your sharpened stick in hand and cook any meat that's attached. Alternatively and the simplest way to cook any meat or food while out on the go is combining a tripod with the fire to attach a cooking pot with. You can find these items around the map. Or if you're on the go and you want something quicker, combining a gas canister and a gas stove can create a way to cook food too. Combining them and then placing them on the floor allows you to add a pot or pan, meaning you can cook any meat you have. This is a lot dimmer and quicker than a campfire but the fuel is finite. You can also add gas lamps to the gas canister, all of which can be most commonly found in houses, summer camps and even farms. Also note that combining a knife with a barrel you find on the map will create a fire barrel, which which not only provides you with a way to cook meat without a pot, stick or pan, but also produces significantly less light than a standard campfire. They're not as maneuverable though, and just make sure you put the lid on to cook your meat. But if you're in the opposite situation and you find yourself needing a portable light and you don't have any of this, adding sticks to rags or fat will allow you to make a torch. Adding fat rags or petrol will allow it to burn for longer. This will provide around the same light as a flare and can be refueled by adding more rags to it. A lifesaver if you're on a pitch black server. What the hell? Oh, footsteps. Yep, footsteps. Uh, hello? Uh, you can let me in. I'd promise you I won't shoot you. Oh, is he opening the door? 
Cause he, yeah, I can hear him opening the door. Yoink. I really hope he got the door open in time. <laughs> I mean, technically, I didn't shoot him. To create a fishing rod, take a long stick you can find from any bush and combine it with a rope. Then combine some bones with a knife to create a bone hook. Add the hook to the improvised rod and you now have a usable fishing rod. However, your catch rate will be awful unless you add bait. To find bait, look at the floor with a knife, shovel, pickaxe or so on and dig up worms. Combine the worms with whatever hook you have and you're good to go. Just stand on the edge near some water and interact. Also note it's possible to find a fishing rod and a hook around the map. But where are you going to store all the items you find on your travels? Well, using a burlap sack and combining it with a rope will give you a 30 slot burlap backpack, which can be further upgraded to 42 slots using three sticks. The burlap sack can be found around farms, sheds and industrial areas, although I personally prefer the leather bag, which requires two tanned leather. You can get leather by killing larger animals for their pelt. You can then combine the pelt with garden lime to get tanned leather. Garden lime can be found in sheds, farms and even greenhouses. Once you've done this, then just use a leather kit on the two tanned leather to make a single bag. This looks much better and has more slots than the standard burlaps bag. Now onto a few combat items or supplies that will help you along the way. The first one is the suppressor. By using duct tape and a plastic bottle, you can create an improvised suppressor that can be attached to most guns though their use will vary depending on caliber with larger calibers getting two shots at best before the suppressor becomes ruined additionally the bk18 mosin and double barrel can be combined with a saw to remove the longer barrels this can not only make these deadly weapons fit in backpacks and much smaller inventories but can make for some pretty extremely deadly short range weapons but note that unless you're going for extremely close combat these guns won't be great however the mosin seems to be decent for medium range shots and you can still attach a scope to it a useful addition in lots of situations but the shotgun is awful unless you're barrel to torso so just be careful using it but if you're not looking to shoot and you're looking for melee damage combining nails with a bat will produce a nailed bat which adds cut damage to most things it hits you can also take a bat and combine it with barbed wire this makes a barbed wire bat this is my personal favorite weapon to look at but let's say you're looking to blend in, then you'll need a ghillie suit. To create a ghillie suit of your own, you'll need burlap strips and netting. To get the strips, take any burlap sack you find and combine it with a knife to cut it. Find the netting around boats, industrial sites, fishing villages and so on, and then combine it to create different pieces of the suit. I'll show a list of how many items each one needs for each piece. But keep in mind you can only create a tan ghillie suit. For variations in colours such as woodland and mossy, you'll need to find these around helicopter crash sites you can sometimes find one or two pieces at each site so stealth is going well for traps you have a selection at your disposal to create a trip wire combine two sticks of metal wire then click place to see where you can put it when it turns white that means you can place it here you can then add your explosive device in the empty slot that appears but keep in mind that zombies can set them off for a snare, a useful item for catching rabbits and chickens, combine metal wire with a stick. Then, similar to the trip wire, add your bait. Worms will attract chickens, fruit will attract rabbits. But this will take a while and you need to be out of the area. To create a bottle fish trap, combine a plastic bottle with a knife, add some worms and leave it in some water. And lastly, combine some netting with some metal wire to create a fishing net. Same as before, leave it in the water with bait, then leave the area and disappear for about 30 minutes. Come back and you might have caught something. If you haven't, reset the trap and try again. It has a pretty good success rate, the success rate increasing depending on if you add bait. Yo, chill, man. We're friends. Oh, God damn it. I was eating a muffin. But sometimes you need to just get away from it all and create an improvised shelter. You can do this easily, giving yourself shelter from the rain, increased warmth, and a hundred slots of storage space. To create a shelter building kit, you'll need four short sticks and a rope. This is the first part to building any of the three available shelters. Select the place you want to build it. 
when it highlights in solid white, you're able to place it down. Then you'll need four long sticks, coupled with either 50 sticks for the stick shelter, four tops for the top shelter, or a tanned leather for a leather shelter. I showed you how to make tanned leather earlier, but in my opinion, the stick shelter is by far the best, lending in a lot more to the surroundings, making it a lot easier to not be detected. But no home would be completed without a garden, specifically a growth patch. To grow your own food, you'll need a shovel, pickaxe or hoe. Aim it at the ground and select the placement of the garden to craft it. And then once it's placed, plant your seeds. You should also add water and if you can, add fertilizer to them to speed up the growing time. Fertilizer is green lime. In around 20 to 50 minutes, you'll have a beautiful and edible garden. Just make sure you pick them while they're ripe, otherwise they will die on the stalks. You can find seeds in farms, greenhouses, or cut any fruit or vegetable you find with a knife to get the seeds out of them. This means that once you've got a garden going, you can basically just keep planting food and waiting and you have an infinite supply whenever you want it. Let's say you don't want to build a camp. Let's say you want to store some items in a crate, maybe even to bury it. To do this, get some planks either by sawing them from a lumber yard or combining a saw with logs you've chopped down and then add some nails. This will allow you to make a crate which you can bury with a shovel or store in your base. And lastly, a few little things. If you break a leg, a splint can be crafted easily using sticks and a rag, bandages or duct tape. Just grab the sticks and add the rag or the bandages or the duct tape. If you want a white armband, you can't use a raincoat. You have to use a sewing kit and a rag. Combining barbed wire and pliers will make metal wire. And always keep in mind that firewood and a hatchet will give you sticks. Going through the video and I've only just realized I'm probably gonna have to restructure how I put these pictures across. That brings us to an end. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. If you think I've gotten something wrong or explained it poorly, let me know. I make all these videos solo, so it's absolutely possible I have, but I always try not to and I will be expanding on it in the future. If you have any tips for other players, please share them down below. Thank you for watching and as always, until next time.